Welcome students and viewers to my continued coverage of chapter 4, Chemical Reactions and Aqueous Solutions. In this one, I'm going to teach you about net ionic equations. Now, like our preceding video, this one is also pretty tricky, so please pay close attention. But before you do that, pay mediocre attention to this hilarious chemistry cat meme that I got from quickmeme.com. This joke, by the way, we can now understand because we understand precipitation reactions. Ready? If you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the precipitate. <laughs> All right, let's get going. So in an earlier video, linked to in the description below, I taught you how to balance and identify the products and physical states, that is aqueous or solid, of this metathesis reaction. Because this metathesis reaction produces an S, that is a solid or precipitate, product, in this case silver carbonate over here, we call it a precipitation reaction. So when a precipitation reaction is written to show the complete chemical formulas of all the reactants and products, as we have here, then we call it a molecular equation. Now in this case, because the sodium carbonate, the silver nitrate, and the sodium nitrate over here are all water-soluble ionic compounds, and we know that because they have AQs written next to them, these three compounds actually get split apart from each other when we throw them into water, because that's what water-soluble things do. The cations and anions just separate out into the water solvent. Make sense? Now we can rewrite this equation with all of the AQ substances getting cut in half, where I've written the splits here, with the cations being separated out from the anions. Now when we do this, the subscripts become coefficients and the charges get unveiled. So let me show you what I'm talking about. You see this silver carbonate right here? We know that it's water soluble because we determined that in a previous video and we have written AQ next to it. AQ means aqueous or water soluble. Now each molecule of this sodium carbonate has two sodium atoms next to one CO3 group. Now because it's water soluble, those two sodium atoms are gonna float away and separate from the CO3. Now when that happens, the charges get unveiled because they're no longer bound together, canceling out each other's charges. So the two sodiums walk away as Na pluses and the CO3 walks away as a CO3 two minus. Again, carbonate is one of those polyatomic anions whose formula, name, and charge I require you to memorize, at least for my students. When this occurs, the subscript, in this case a two next to the sodium, gets moved out as a coefficient. So we write the result down here as two Na and because the Na is now separating from the CO3, its charge gets unveiled. So it's actually two Na plus. So there's two Na pluses that walk away when it separates out from the CO3. Similarly, the CO3 walks away as CO3 two minus. Now you might argue, doesn't the subscript right here get moved over here to the left and become a coefficient in the CO3? The answer is no. The three in the CO3 should not be treated as a subscript when you're doing this bookkeeping stuff. Again, for polyatomic ions, I just look at that three as being an intrinsic part of the CO3 group. Don't treat it as a subscript. A CO3 is just one lump, <laughs> CO3, okay? So the only thing that happens is that the CO3's charge gets unveiled as a two minus, and we write AQ next to both of these. Does that make sense? So we're gonna do this analogous thing for every one of these formulas that has an AQ next to it. When silver nitrate gets thrown into water, the silver and the nitrate part ways. The silver, as we discovered in our earlier video, has a plus one charge. This two coefficient remains a coefficient when that silver nitrate separates, so we have two Ag pluses. Now similarly, this two gets multiplied through, so we also end up with two NO3 minuses. So again, this means that we started with two molecules of AgNO3. When those two molecules of AgNO3 separate out, we end up with two Ag pluses and two NO3 minuses, okay? Now again, just like the carbonate, the three in the nitrate does not turn into a coefficient. It just goes out and the charges that were previously masked because they were bound to each other, canceling each other out, get unveiled, all right? We now write the yield sign and then over here with the sodium nitrate, analogous thing. We have two Na pluses and two NO3 minuses. Now the silver carbonate over here is a solid precipitate, which means that it does not dissolve in solution. It does not have an AQ written next to it. So it just remains exactly as is untouched, okay? So this is the way we begin parsing out our original molecular precipitation equation and turning it into, or beginning the process of turning it into a net ionic equation, all right? So once again, if we write our overall precipitation equation in this form, it is called a molecular equation because all of the molecules are still written in their molecular forms, molecular equation, okay? They're all whole molecules that have not been broken apart. Now, 
when we write out our equation in the form shown down here, with all of the soluble compounds being separated out as aqueous ions, we call it the complete ionic equation. We see all of the ions written out completely. Please notice that some of these ions are the same on both sides of the equation. So unlike a mathematical equation where we have an equal sign separating the left from the right, in chemical equations we have a yields sign or arrow separating the left from the right. Nevertheless, you can see that there are some species that are the same on the left as on the right. You see, for example, this sodium plus AQ, there's one on the left side of the equation, and there's one over here on the right. So we can actually algebraically cancel those out. Similarly, there's a two nitrates over here on the left, and there are two nitrates on the right side of the equation. We can cancel those two out. Isn't that great? Algebra is wonderful. All right, so we can then rewrite the equation with everything that's left over, which will look, in this case, like this carbonate combining with silver to give us solid silver carbonate. So when the equation is written in this way, we call it the net ionic equation because we have what is left over, the net. To review then, if we write our precipitation equation in this form without separating out cations and anions, it's called the molecular equation. If we write it in this form where we've separated out everything and we keep everything shown, it's called the complete ionic equation. And when we cancel out everything that's the same on both sides of the equation and write what's left over, it is in this form called the net ionic equation. So this is the process we go through in order to derive a net ionic equation. With that said, the ions that get algebraically canceled out, in this example, the uh, sodiums and the nitrates that I've indicated here with these kind of black lines here, are called spectator ions. Spectator ions, as it turns out, play no direct role in the actual reaction. The ions and the products that are not spectator ions do directly participate in the reaction. So if you took, for example, sodium carbonate and silver nitrate and threw them together in a container and mixed them together, what would happen is the sodium carbonate and silver nitrate ions would all dissolve and separate out. Then the silver ions and the carbonate ions would find each other, lock together, and combine to form silver carbonate. The sodiums and the nitrates would just continue staying dissolved out and never come together and form anything because they don't precipitate. Make sense? Okay, to review then, in order to write out a net ionic equation, we go through these steps. One, we use the steps from our earlier video to write the full and balanced precipitation reaction, which involves the following. Do the partner swap, then identify all of your substances as being aqueous or solid according to the solubility rules then balance the equation, and then last, if everything is AQ or soluble, write no reaction. Now, the full and balanced precipitation equation that you've just made is called the molecular equation. Next, you cut all of the AQ species in half and separate out all the ions. In that process, coefficients all remain the same, but subscripts become coefficients. The resulting equation from this step is called the complete ionic equation, and last, you algebraically cancel out any ions that are the same on both sides. Canceled out ions are called spectator ions. The resulting equation then is called the net ionic equation. Let's take a look then at an actual example from my university student's homework. Please write out net ionic equations for the reactions that occur in each of the following cases. Then identify the spectator ion or ions in each reaction. Now, I'm not going to do that in this video, but I'll post a link here to a follow-up video in which you can see me work out one of these examples.